What's up, everybody? Welcome back, your subscriber. If you're new, welcome. So today, guys, we are going to take a look at some uh, brands that are actually in the NFT space, in particular, Ambush, uh, which we'll talk more. But um, maybe this could be like a weekly episode where we just look at digital fashion uh, with a guy who doesn't know anything about fashion. But I'm sure a lot of you guys right now that are trading NFTs don't know much about fashion as well. So we'll get to learn alongside with each other, okay? So last night I was going through my Discord and I was in the Neo Tokyo Season 2 Discord group. And one of the guys there brought this to my attention uh, that there was a mint going on for this company called Ambush. Now, I'll be honest, guys. Like I said, I'm a fashion noob and I'm trying to learn this space as much as I can because I know NFTs uh, are going to be huge in this space alongside with, you know, gaming uh, and other industries as well but with ambush like i had to look it up and see what it was but the guy in the discord group he uh, described it as a fashion brand that was based out of tokyo and you know they, they focused on streetwear they focused on jewelry um and you know what at that time it was like 20 30 minutes before the the mint that was taking place for the public sale so you know i, I quickly researched it in that like 20 30 minutes and I was like, okay, you know, this brand looks pretty good because, you know, you look at their, uh, I mean, this is their website right now. And, you know, if you look at their, uh, you know, some of the, the clothes that they have for sale, you can definitely say this is a luxury brand just by looking at the prices. I mean, I look at these prices here, look at this jacket. Uh, this one, this jacket right here is going for like $2,400, as you can see. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, here we got one for what 1700 around there uh, this one again $1,700 so this is a pretty luxurious brand a lot of these jackets here are like two thousand two hundred three thousand one hundred sixty five dollars uh, I mean twelve hundred I mean these are pretty expensive jackets we got one thousand so women's clothes we got one thousand five hundred one thousand four hundred uh, seven uh, yeah so I mean they're all over a thousand dollars I mean <laughs> ready to wear what else we have here earrings oh yeah jewelry some some jewelry here around 600 bucks a small padlock earring it's 430 dollars a uh, round ear cuff 475 bucks uh what else do we have here oh, 1755 dollars for these earrings so we got like some kind of like safety clip with an earring here uh looks pretty cool actually uh this one's going for 570 dollars so candy charm 2 earring maybe i'll add this to the bag no just kidding but yeah you can definitely see some of the prices here are pretty uh pretty on the high end i would say well to me i mean to a guy who doesn't know anything about fashion this is definitely more than what you see at a uh you know typical you know department store <laughs> you know like an average department store or something um but yeah so we definitely can see some of these earrings here going for over a thousand dollars uh with some very unique designs i would say very unique designs you got some more safety safety pins here or safety clips or whatever you want to call that so by the way this is the website that allowed you to mint yesterday for the public sale obviously it's sold out by now uh, but the mint price was 0 0.15 eth and uh man this thing sold out pretty quickly it sold out fast i mean i was i think it was what 8 p.m or i think it was 8 p.m eastern time last night and as soon as it hit 8 p.m man this thing sold out within a minute or so um but you can definitely see the metaverse is ambushed with the first official emergence of the pow nft series the collection of 2022 pow reboot rings merge virtual and real granting access to exclusive drops experiences and more from tokyo to web3 ambushdesign.com spawns ambushdesign.io i like that i like that so that that's awesome um now yeah going on to their uh, instagram page they definitely do have a lot of followers and that probably explains why the thing sold out so quickly but then again i think um a lot of people in the NFT space probably got wind that this was a very popular fashion brand. They jumped in on it because probably a lot of these, I don't know. I, I can't say because, you know, people are spending like $500, $1,000 on earrings. I'm sure they know something, a thing or two about NFTs. So <laughs> I'm sure they do. Um, but you can definitely see 778,000 followers on their Instagram page. And uh, yeah, so 
it seems like they're a very popular brand so this was just the things that i was looking at right before the mint date and i only had like 20 30 minutes to look into this company um but i also looked at some quick uh, youtube videos as well and uh we're gonna quickly look at that oh by the way so if you look at the uh on the secondary market on OpenSea, right now it's at 0.52 eth so if you're very fortunate getting at 0.15 eth you're pre basically over 3 extra your money right 0.52 and uh so again there's only 2022 20, of these items and as you can see uh it's not quite it's not revealed yet so i don't know uh it's very possible i'm not sure when the reveal date is but when things start to reveal usually you see with these nfts that the price the floor price drops because people are expecting they're hoping for a rare nft but they end up getting like a common uh not a very rare nft so they just start undercutting the floor price and trying to get rid of it uh just to get back their liquidity so yeah so usually that's what happens with these reveals after the reveal the, the floor price usually drops so keep that in mind i am definitely i don't have any of these so i'm definitely keeping an eye on the floor price to see if i can possibly grab one uh, for a decent price because I, I do like what I see with this company and from from my research it's um, they haven't been around for a very long time and in fact I'm going to play this video for you guys on YouTube shout out to this guy Keezy TV subscribe to him I'm actually not even subscribed so maybe I should um, but uh, I'm going to let him describe to you guys what Ambush is and he's going to give you a quick history of it and uh we're going to learn this together, guys, because, like I said, digital fashion is going to be huge. And one thing with NFTs is definitely has opened up my eyes to different industries that I'm not very well versed in. And, you know, some of the stuff that I'm learning right now is very, uh, it's new to me, but it's also very exciting for me. It, it gives me this nice feeling of, hey, there's so much more to explore in this space. And uh, I, I just get that warm and fuzzy feeling. So... Anyways, let me play this video. We're going to learn about Ambush together and uh, enjoy. Oh, without further ado, let's talk about it. <laughs> so I'm actually very happy to create this content on this topic since we finally get a chance to talk about female representation in streetwear. As far as this recording goes, Ambush's popularity is fairly new, but since the beginning, they've already collaborated with some of the heavyweights like Nigo, Sakai, Undercover, and also Nike. The name came about because of Yoon's style of creating things by surprise, thus the name Ambush. Now, much of the descriptions of the brand online does not say that they are specifically a streetwear brand and instead is labeled as a Japanese jewelry brand. So their approach to marketing the garments is quoted as apparel created as a canvas to complete the story. But of course, more on that later. So why don't we take a couple steps back and talk about the owners and their beginnings. Ambush was founded by two people, Verbal and Yoon. Yoon is a Korean American who grew up in Seattle and was always fascinated by youth culture. In their college days, they met at Boston University where Verbal studied philosophy and Yoon studied graphic design. By 1998, Verbal had left the Japanese hip hop group called M-Flow and started his career in the music industry. But where they both began their collaborations was starting with Verbal's passion for music and Yoon's eye for design. While other rappers of the times were covered in baggy clothes with a hip hop aesthetic, Yoon later assisted with getting Verbal into brands he loved like Dior and Raph Simmons, which was totally a different take on what was popular at the time. Some might even argue that this was the beginning of mixing high-end luxury fashion into rap imagery. But of course, I leave that debate for you in the comments section below. Now moving ahead a couple years in 2002, they partnered and created Ambush Design Company, which was stated to be a design outlet for Yoon. And under the same branding, she helped to design rap covers for artists, which of course included Verbal. By 2006, Verbal's rap career had taken off by being a part of a group called the Teriyaki Boys, which was manifested by Nigo. This connection to the industry later gave them exposure for their jewelry and landed them in the circles of prominent names like Pharrell Williams, Aesop Rocky, and Kanye West, which also marked the beginning of their first brand that was called Antonio Murphy's and Astros. So by 2008, they established their second line, which is an instant success. 
ambush designs casted a new wave of jewelry aesthetic and gained enough popularity that it was hard not to notice. And to prove my point for brand relevancy, does anyone remember the chain that was floating around the internet that said POW on it, or P-O-W? This design was actually made by Ambush, and the person who promoted that chain the most was Big Sean. This iconic design had peaked around 2010, and as we know it, Big Sean solidified this look wearing it on his debut album, Finally Famous. But it wasn't only Sean's contribution to supporting Ambush. It was also people like Jay-Z and Kanye West who'd been seen rocking the beaded chains that helped create stir for the brand in conjunction. And while of course these major artists don't take all the credit for Yoon's entry into pop culture, but this was definitely a good ripple effect to get her foot in the door. And through Yoon's words herself, she states, We belong to a generation of designers who grew up on skate culture and street clothes in the 1990s and 2000s. So naturally, it gets manifested in our creations. And this might... I'm going to stop the video here because I don't want the video to drag on for too long. But I encourage you guys to watch the rest of this video so you guys can learn more about ambush design. But I want to stop at this point with this jewelry here that has the word POW or POW. Uh, so it was ambush design that designed this. And which makes sense. If you go back to their NFT drop, you can see POW as in their title here. Ambush Official POW Reboot. So uh, that makes sense. That makes sense why you know POW is in their title. And it's to do with this uh, jewelry. I have so many tabs open here. That uh, this jewelry here that was originally designed by them. So just a little history lesson for you guys that have seen this jewelry before, and uh, you had no idea where it was originated from. But it's actually from Ambush Design Company themselves. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but you can also see Big Sean, all these rappers, Big Sean, Jay Z, Kanye. You see them all with their with their jewelry, their gold chains, and you know necklaces and stuff like that. Uh, so it's uh, it's definitely a brand that uh, even the big people are in. So um, so definitely that's why I am definitely keeping my eyes on the Ambush Official Pow Reboot NFT series. Uh, like like I said, right now um, the mint price was 0.15, but now it's up to 0.52. And uh, like I said. I it might drop after we reveal, so I'm definitely keeping my eyes on this. So uh, again, not financial advice, but I'm just bringing you to your awareness for anyone out there that doesn't know much about Ambush Design Company, like I, for instance. Uh, and after looking into it, it seems like a pretty uh, uh, luxurious brand that I would actually invest in into their NFT. That's my opinion. Okay, so the next thing is, if you're looking to follow someone that's in the digital fashion space, I recommend you follow Corinna here. She's the uh, co-CEO of the Dematerialized Marketplace, a marketplace that I have talked about quite a bit on this channel. And uh, also follow her partner in crime, uh, Marjorie Hernandez. So she's the uh, co-founder of Luxo and the Dematerialized Marketplace. So these are two uh, ladies that I follow on Instagram. I highly recommend you follow them as well for any of these digital fashion, uh, for any digital fashion alpha, basically. Um, but um, Corinna, she actually uh, was on this um, on this YouTube video here talking about luxury NFTs. And I highly recommend, maybe I'll post a link in the description if you guys want want to watch the whole video. It's a pretty long video. Um, but they do end up talking about luxury NFTs. Um, but there is, I'm going to play a quick part of this video where they talk about this gentleman a name Gerald Genta. Now Gerald Genta, they described him as the Picasso of watch design. And Sotheby's is actually auctioning off his uh, his designs of these watches as NFTs. And you can actually go on the Sotheby uh, thus, da -da, you can actually go on the Sotheby's website and place bids on these NFTs. And I'll show you afterwards. But we're gonna play this quick video right here uh, where they talk about Gerald Genta. Yeah, and I, I presume this applies so much to the upcoming sale, um, the Gerald Genta Icon of Time, celebrating the man behind some of the most sought after watches in the world. Um, they transformed the luxury industry um, with these visionary designs. Could you tell us a bit more about how the sale sits within our theme of luxury NFTs? Sure. You uh, refer to Gerald Genta as a Picasso of watches, and I think that's just the, the most uh, fitting explanation. For those of you who um, are not as familiar with Gerald Genta's um, work, 
Gerald is one of the most legendary and unparalleled watch designer. Um, a, the most important watch designer who has ever lived. And um, when Gerald created some of the most important watches of today, he did so by drawing an exquisite watercolour for each, which provided a blueprint of a masterwork of time that was created by various um, and famous watch uh, companies in the future. As you can see on the screen now, um, these are the three highlights of the sales that we'll be having at Sotheby's starting um, in Geneva on the 10th of February with bidding starting at 100 Swiss francs for each item. We have 31 out of 100 designs that have been selected from the archives of um, Gerald Center's family vaults of the designs that he created that then became some of the most famous watches and most coveted watches that have excelled in the, in the watch world um, since their creation. So on the left-hand side, you have the highlight of our Geneva sale, which is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak and one of the most cel celebrated watches um, that Gerald made. Our sales will start in uh, February in Geneva and then move to Hong Kong from the 17th to the 16th of March, New York from the 13th to the 27th of April, with around 30 uh, lots in each sale. Each physical design will be accompanied by a digital twin, an NFT that has a digital representation of the design, plus a certificate of authenticity signed by the Genta family. Um, and that source of provenance, uh, the listing of and the recording of this item in an immutable way on the blockchain will accompany the physical design. They're going to be sold together as a physical and a digital design and then continue to be sold together in the future, keeping a constant record from the family through um, collectors uh, over time. So, Frederic, I'd love to hear from you about how your father would feel about this sale, this ultimate combination of history and, you know, the leading present-day technology, how this continues the incredible legacy that he left. Yeah, I think he would be, he would be extremely proud of uh, the uh, upcoming auction for, for many reasons. The first one is that uh, he was a genius, he was a designer. Those designs are the equivalent of buying the blueprint or the 40 for cars or the first Macintosh for uh, the computers. He was the one that invented. And when you are buying those designs and those NFTs, you are buying the majority of the 20th century watchmaking design industry. So I think he would be, uh, he would be extremely proud. He would be extremely, uh, I would say, excited about the disruption that we discussed before and the value added of NFTs because we all know that internet was a machine for copy, was a machine sometimes for fake, fake news, and sometimes even the art world is suffering from fraud, from issues. NFTs and art NFTs are bringing a concrete answer to make uh, better art better product to, to guarantee the unicity and uh, the authenticity of the product. And he was very attached to his Swiss roots, to the fact that product had to be authentic. He designed many products that were unique. And the fact we use NFTs are fully matching his conviction and his philosophy. And, um, and I think he will also be extremely excited to initiate a new trend because these NFTs in art are going to be a lasting trend. There is going to be, I think, uh, elements that are going to grow and grow in value because they match all the industry booming trends. We said the metaverse this is going to come in years. We said the NFTs, we said the blockchain, and we said the need for unicity, for authenticity. So I think he would be proud. He would be proud to be able to share with some connoisseur <coughs> a part of the watch history and I would say the greatest heritage of the 20th century watch history. I think he would be extremely excited to be able to solve a problem in the art industry of technology. And he would be even more excited to be able to 
launched to be at the beginning of a lasting trend that is going to bring a lot and a lot of value to the art industry, to the people who are going to go NFTs. And he would be really keen to start this new trend of value as he started many of the watches that today the top leaders in the world are wearing. I think that would be his feeling right now. Wow. So that guy who he basically elegantly piece together the the perfect description of nfts um and why we need nfts it's such a huge need especially in the art industry because um you look at look at this article right here where a french museum discover half of its collections are fakes right with nfts everything is verified on the blockchain right it's so easy to verify a piece of art it's so easy to verify a collectible like on vivi right it's so easy to verify that this is the original artwork or original collectible or original music nft i mean it's so easy to prove on the blockchain that this is the original okay so in this case, with uh, with his father's uh, NFTs, with it comes to the watch design, we know for sure that this is the original NFT of this watch design from Jero Genta, also known as the, they described him as the Picasso of watch design, right? So, if you go on Sotheby's, uh, not on Ambush. So, if you go on the Sotheby's website. Uh, if you go to their auctions here, and then you can see Jero Genta Icon of Time. And one of the watch designs that, uh, let me get rid of this here. One of the watch designs that I actually really liked is the one in the middle here. The, the Disney, the Mickey Mouse uh, watch that he has. This one's a very popular one. Definitely no surprise there. Yeah, I can definitely see this one going for a lot of money. So I don't think I'll be able to win the auction when it comes to that one. But uh, if you go uh, scroll down here, let me see, view auction. Let's see how much it's going for, just for curiosity's sake here. So this one, not quite. So this one's going to be, the bidding opens on the 13th of April. Uh, so not quite yet. So you can definitely place bids online, by the way, even though it says in New York City, but you can definitely place bids online. Uh, let me see. Some of these ones are actually uh, going on right now. I'm sure. Yeah, here, so here, sir, uh, here are some of the ones that are on auction right now. Um, now, I've actually never placed a bid or actually got anything off the Sotheby's website. Uh, so let me see here. So you can definitely filter the price here from low to high. Uh, so some of the so the current bid right now is in uh, Swiss francs, so sixty five thousand Swiss francs. Um, I think it's about. Uh, I think one Swiss franc is a little bit more than one. Let me see how much is Swiss. So one Swiss franc is equal to one dollar and thirty seven cents Canadian. Uh, so definitely it's more than uh, sixty five thousand dollars Canadian then. So that's crazy. <laughs> Some of these watch designs, uh, which has a physical counterpart as well. So it's physical and digital. Um, but let me see if there's some cheap ones here. Is that the cheapest one? I... Okay, low to high. Estimate low to high. That's the one I should be going for here. So estimate. So I want to go for estimate low to high, not the lot number. Uh, estimate low to high. So that'll give me the price. So the cheapest one that's on bid right now is 1300 Swiss francs. Current bid 2200. Okay, so these are a little bit more reasonable. Um I can possibly afford some of these. Oh, so we got some one here that are 600 Swiss francs. So I mean some of them are pretty cheap here relatively speaking, of course. Uh but yeah, definitely I would keep an eye on this because you can definitely see some of these auctions does accept cryptocurrency. So that's great. Great for us, right? A lot of us are in crypto, obviously, uh that are, that you guys are watching this channel. So that's great. A lot of these auctions here uh are they do accept crypto. So that's awesome. That is awesome. Um but yeah, so there's I believe there's 100 designs and uh I think the auction for for the first lot ends on february let me see february the 24th so you can see right there it ends february the 24th so personally i'm definitely going to keep my eyes on this because if this is like one of the uh, legendary watch design makers right 
then it's probably worth to have in your NFT portfolio. Definitely, it can definitely be worth a lot in the years to come. But, you know, just watching that video, you can see that these people are taking this NFT thing very seriously, right? And so all you guys are saying NFTs are a scam. I mean, <laughs> you think, uh, you know, the Gerogenta family would think it's a scam or anyone at Sotheby's or any of these art museums would think NFTs are a scam. I don't see them thinking it's a scam because look at it. I mean, this is serious. This is serious things. This is a serious thing, man, where NFTs are just, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is the early adoption of NFTs that we're seeing right in front of our eyes here, guys. So I'm definitely keeping my eyes on this. Um, Obviously, I think most of the bidding action is going to happen right before the end. So uh, if you try to place a bid right now, it's going to be definitely outbid. You're going to be definitely outbidded for sure. Um, but uh, you can definitely see there's a lot of designs here. There's, I believe there's like 100 designs here uh, in total. And it's going to be spread out. This is the first lot that we're seeing uh, that's, you know, that's taking place right now in these next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but it is ending on February the 24th. So keep that in mind, guys. Okay. Um, but anyways, that's what I want to bring to your attention. Uh, let me see if there's anything going on the dematerialized marketplace. I believe there was a drop, like a secret Teflon Sega drop that happened. Uh, if you guys don't know, Teflon Sega is a musician um, who's pretty popular uh, on Spotify for what I see. And he has pretty good music. I had a chance to listen to some of his music. Um, but uh, there is a drop happening, uh, screenware paper, 28th of February. So that uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, yada, yada, yada. Keep your eyes on that. Uh, if you guys are interested in getting to the dematerialized marketplace with their NFT drops, um, like I said, I mean, I'm keeping my eyes heavily on the dematerialized marketplace. And if you guys are not... If you guys want to play like play it safe when it comes to digital fashion, uh, you could always look into Luxo. I keep bringing this up, but I mean, this is a coin I'm very bullish on. Uh, but Luxo is the uh, blockchain that the dematerialized marketplace is being built on top of. So keep that in mind, okay? And also the uh, one of the co-founders, Fabian Vogelsteller, he is the author of the ERC-20 standard, okay? So all those tokens that are on the Ethereum network that are ERC-20, he is the guy who proposed uh, the standard, okay? He's responsible for all that. So very, very bullish on Luxo, okay? But anyways, I will leave the video at that, guys. If you guys like the video, smash a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.